I can see that happening a lot. Like people trying to like elevate themselves and stretching, uh, you know, few experience in the industry, stretching them as much as possible to appear big and trying to like, you know, climb the ladder. Yeah. But for me, I think there's no point to be, to be uh, too much in a hurry of being a soup. I think you need to build up your career like cleverly and, you know, accumulate experience and skill and then, then you'll be ready. So yeah, basically this is the second part of the podcast since we now two weeks later, two weeks older. You yeah, yeah. You still forty? Yeah, I mean I edge a little bit. <laughs> you as well, but you know, the other way around. Like I can tell with yeah, the beard. I, I did get younger, uh, less beard and compared. <laughs> so yeah, we were we were talking about still the Google uh, leadership points, and just to finish this up. Um, and give have some commentary of you. <laughs> it's more a recap for us than really for the one who were <laughs> who are watching or listening, because it's two weeks since we did that the first part. And yeah, so we had point six supports career development and discuss performance. Mm -hmm. um, point seven is has a clear vision strategy for the team. That's uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it does make sense. Um, I mean, as we discussed previously, I think as a as a leader, you need to have uh, a global vision. And as I said before, you you shouldn't be like micromanaging, but have like just zoom out and have an overview of where things should go and how we should do it. And then uh, you let uh, your team doing the awesome, you know, like very localized. Um, uh, thing and you're basically just helping driving them in the on the long run in the right direction basically yes google separates between the vision and the micromanagement mm -hmm. so that like point three was the was the um the vision part uh no the, the point two was the micromanaging part mm -hmm. uh, so they kind of separate and i i agree with that so like one is more the you you don't take over point where you where you don't feel like motherly mm -hmm. uh, engaged in every situation and you have to micromanage yeah. and one is like like he like really have a plan and people feel it like you know transparent yep. through your actions they know there is a longer game going on and not just like reacting and on top of that like let's say if you've got a, a fairly big team you can't micromanage everything first you need to um, trust your team so you outsourcing some of the tasks and you just need to be there like to do an overall management and uh, and then you need to delegate stuff obviously because i think to me that's also uh, what could lead to being a bad leader is like not trusting enough your team and doing everything yourself because you don't have confidence in your team so yeah. um yeah i think in an ideal world, I mean, I asked that once to a, a CG soup in the company I was like working uh, before, like, hey, do you have any like advice? Um, and he said like, the ideal scenario would be you just doing nothing. Like if you're doing your job well, you should tend to like, just basically let the scene run and you do nothing. You just like, you know, supervise from far. But of course this never happened because you've, you always have something to uh, to fix or to balance or to dress. But you need to kind of target that, um, you know, to basically, if your job is well done, everything. You're redundant. Exactly. Oh, that's interesting. I, I never thought about like like that way, but it makes sense kind of to, to say it's like, if you don't micromanage, basically they do all mm -hmm. the work. And you you're in this position because you just have a look and make sure that like they they wave in the right direction and not just like uh, micromanage in a specific direction and then and then it's suddenly like oh it doesn't make sense like um, the typical example I already brought up with Eugenie is when when Pixar had this situation when they started to create uh, covers for CDs and they later find found out that it's at, um, Basically, you don't see the CDs, but everyone was so hyped about creating monsters, co monster uh, covers for these monster mm -hmm. CDs. Uh, but in the end, you just see like a shelf with like a 
pinnacle of them. Yeah. And yeah, because there was for a moment there was no one who was like understood the whole vision of the of the of the scene or the whole vision of the movie. And kind of they started to micro uh, like focus. And also another downside of like not um, delegating and micromanaging is like you could also become uh, what we call a single point of uh, failure. Mm -hmm. Is like basically if without you the show is stopping pretty much, and that's not good because. In an ideal world, things should run by themselves pretty much. And if you're not there for one reason or another, let's say you've got a, a long meeting or you need to go on, on um, set for a day or two, things should run pretty much normally. And if you keep micromanaging, then everything falls apart when you're not here. I think that's hard for a lot of people. I think this, this, um, this being, um, you can say, feeling important and feeling like like you know this feeling when you when you go on holidays and you sometimes like the higher the position the mm -hmm. more you have to feeling like everything will burn down when you go yeah and and then you come back and like basically nothing happened yeah like like n nothing negative especially like maybe things was not so correct but uh, over life found yeah. its way kind yeah. of way <laughs> yeah exactly and, but on the, on the opposite side we we kind of strive to be so important that if we would like leave or if we would go on vacation or something if we wouldn't there for a day that we have the feeling like we are so important and so necessity of the company on of this project that if we're not there that something will be missing and in a way it's it's a conflict i think yeah. because you want to feel you're important like you're a stone or a piece in this puzzle but on the opposite side if you're too much uh, of that you basically break the moment you don't do your job yeah. or you focus on the wrong things but as i said it's a target it's something you're aiming for and of course this will never happen because there is always something some some like issue to solve or stuff to review so but I think having that as a global direction helps you to um, delegate and make people autonomous and uh, and in the same time like helping them growing you combine all of them <laughs> the vision is also the strategy for the people <laughs> and the project and yourself and the leadership and it's like uh like uh like, oh, how was uh, I, I don't know if it's there's an english expression in germany we call it uh, like an egg lying egg milk lying pig okay you know so basically it's a pig a cow and uh, and a hen at the same time okay this is like the the triangle of uh, of everything you it's know like a chimera Maybe. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, you can have everything from this one animal, yeah. and uh, this sounds like like you know in the vision it's like everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, let's see what what Google says to that. So um, they say great managers know where they're what what they're where where they're going, but they make sure the whole team knows too, rather than keeping them in the dark. I think this is like also. I mean, you can you can communicate it through action basically, but sometimes it makes sense like to write it down or explain it. It's a little bit like the vision um, when we were talking about company culture mm -hmm. um, um, with Carl Rosendale and he said like vision is very important, at least the the, the main vision should be. So for example, um, your, your company focused on creating animation feature films, even if you are not there now, but this is the goal and it should be clear without even maybe expressing, but everyone should know that this is the goal, the end goal. Um, they're also careful to communicate scope realistic expectation as to what specific actions are needed to execute a strategy and each team member's role in delivering. So it's very like formal. <laughs> yeah. like everything that's you written is very yeah. formal like, kind of way. It sounds like a, like a contract almost like. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I think your answer uh, gave that uh, a lot of uh, weight because uh, you can literally see that uh, you agree with the, the vision part that is like First thing, you should have a vision. And second thing, you should act out to the vision. And third thing, you should communicate yeah. that everyone knows. Like Because I think this is a lot of times one of, one of the biggest issues. Like I, I talked with um, safety. That was the one of the issues I have. But also this communication of someone has something in their mind. And maybe it's correct, maybe not, whatever. But a lot of times, uh, a lot of people around doesn't know that. And they, they act of what they know which a lot of times is, is um, can be contrary to the vision of someone's supervisor or some company. And they're like, both are frustrated because one is blocking them, the other one is blocking the other. And, and like, yeah, but why? Because people don't understand where you're going because you never said, you maybe say, okay, I want to go to 
I want to make this project, this and this, but maybe they don't know that the company in 10 years should become this. So you have to be, while you do this project, like focus a little bit more on this side so slowly you can drift off. But if they didn't know, they just make the project as good as it can or this shot or whatever. And I think this is a lot of times like a key point. And, and, and also I think like uh, what we could add to that is um, as, a, as a lead uh, or sub, you need to also be aware of your limitation. Like, and be honest with, with, with them, like um, as an example, like myself, when I was um, in a lean modeling role um, on specific, very like uh, special and specific subject like anatomy and, you know, character, uh, likeness, that kind of stuff. Uh, I know they, they, they are like way better artists than me on that side. So I, w I wasn't afraid or ashamed to like request help or, um, or advice from someone from my team like hey we've got like a meeting with the the rigging team on the muscle aspect or the deformation like come with me i need your um help and and vision and understanding so uh, i think there is no there's no downside uh, to that rather than like oh i will delete it myself and and then you're taking the risk of uh, giving wrong or incomplete information to your team so yeah. i think being honest with that is a key point yes i just just heard like i'm, I'm listening to a book as lost connection and um the, the, he basically said um that we always strive to be intelligent like in the room specifically mm -hmm. the most intelligent if possible but uh, what people don't, a lot of times or we don't a lot of times don't understand intelligence is infinite so it's kind of like we don't take away from someone else intelligent if he has more yeah so there's no like you know there's no like it's not like that that if someone is more intelligent then he takes away from our intelligence generally yeah so and this uh, this is basically this the same idea is kind of like um make the advantage and it's it's a lot of times ego unsecureness and th that's why a lot of times vision are not communicate because maybe you don't have one or you don't understand don't really understand your own vision maybe you don't know how to communicate it a lot of things come to place but in, it ends up vision um, and safety are two of the main factors of um, uh, having like um, yeah missing this this key aspect it happens a lot that they're not communicating because of all the f insecurity they built up in their self and i think this is like shame mm -hmm. and just i think the way that that we try to talk about it is like um it's your responsibility as a as a leader as a supervisor and so take time for that like don't just feel enc encouraged to do like skill jobs like micromanagement and, and stuff i think like putting too much in ego into that it's not a Necessary, necessarily a good thing uh, because I mean obviously there is no way for you to know every topic perfectly and every subject you need to have in your team like strong skill set and strong um, uh, you know people that can on, on, on who you can rely for a specific subject and that's what makes your base I think you read already the next point <laughs> <laughs> Did you pick there? Because the next point is uh, has key technical skills to help advise the team, which is kind of uh, yeah the the point here. Like, do you have to know your craft to become yeah. a lead, to become a supervisor? Um, it's not a necessity to be a good lead, a good supervisor to be like you can be without the craft. I think it's possible. It's I hard. Think you need to have it because. Um, at least you need to have like some very strong um, uh, key skills yeah. because uh, that will help you uh, gaining some respect and uh, trustability with your team. Like basically if you're incapable of, or if you don't know what you're talking about, which it's, it's a bit of a stretch, but you got the point. Yeah. Like it's very unlikely like your team will, will listen to you so of course you can be a good manager but in our industry yeah i think i'm, I'm maybe mistaking it a little bit with, with coordinators too much um because sometimes it's overlapping sometimes with the the management aspect mm -hmm. so um yeah but i absolutely agree i i normally would always say even for coordinators i would always say be 
in some department at least, like be a modeler or a, a rigger or someone, and then you get to coordination because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's at least a fragment of null understanding yeah. and uh, just especially like being part of it, yeah. like um, not just liking animation films or something, uh, yeah. but also like worked in on that, I think creates already this enough understanding that you, even if you don't know the exact environment you're in for example you're suddenly in a different aspect of it for example you also like as a supervisor i know you switch a lot even if modeling is your main part mm -hmm. i mean you're a generalist but still modeling is your yeah. your main part so a lot of things will so surprise you or you're like oh, i don't know that but still since you have one area where you're really good in and generally understand the whole pipeline yeah i've got a sense of what's exactly uh, i think this is to be done yeah but um yeah i, I think my uh, main skills help me to uh you know uh, gather people with me and for other subjects i i might not be as uh, accurate as let's say on lighting for example yeah. so i know my stuff but the lighting soup will be you know better obviously than me so i will rely on him and we will create that discussion and that exchange and uh, i will try to to bring in my uh, yeah global vision and where we need to go and it will uh, offer me solution and options to go there and that's how the exchange uh, is becoming uh, you know uh, productive yeah I think it should be uh, point number one not point number eight like skill it's like like the key skill should be like the fundamental of yeah. everything and then like first skill and then management especially in our industry because our industry is, is fairly technical and specialized. Yeah, I mean, we are not like selling clothes or, you know, so we need to buy ourselves some, let's say, respect or yeah, trustability uh, with our skill. And then the management is another key, asp key aspect and the two will combine to create a good lead. I think I think you can you can also add fame to that. It's also easy to just add fame. It's like uh, I see a lot of it. This is also part of this this uh, like industry. I mean, fame is everywhere, but here it's definitely uh, something where skill and fame goes hand in hand. So if you have just fame, it's mm -hmm. more than enough. So if you worked on on Jurassic Park and da 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 and all the big uh, studios. The skill maybe shines through after a while or not, depends on. But if you had this this like uh, repertoire of things, it's could be could be like as important because that creates also kind of a respect. But if, um, you, if you only have the femme and no skill, it's very a uh, short term. But you're a good manager, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. I, I mean, of course, you're still a like, good supervisor. But I mean, like with fame, you can uh, over overshadow the the skill part. Like, I don't say like you're not skilled at all. Like, this is, like this is impossible. You cannot be. Uh... Oh, I <laughs> so okay. Like maybe some. <laughs> yeah, but in general, what I mean is uh, is you're not you're not you're not up to date anymore. You're you know what I mean. It's like for, for years you you lost completely touch to skill at all. So uh, I really so. Some people, I mean, Dave? not often, but it happened like, you know, sometime to see like completely <laughs> skillless people climbing the ladder to like the biggest studio. Like you have no idea how. Yeah, yeah. but it happens. I'm sure of that. And um, sometimes it's really hard to figure out like, like what is the issue? Because it's like um, a lot of people like there's a lot of situational environment that can make you skillless basically you know like you're maybe skillful but you don't get the chance to work on stuff you don't know about you uh, no one uh, explains you anything so I think it's yeah but what I mean is a little bit um, that that fame can create this basic respect and then mm -hmm. if you're a good supervisor even if your skill level is like completely out because maybe you didn't do anything anymore like in your own case, like modeling, you you were fine. Mo okay, modeler, you went for years. Now you have a like a good resume. Now you get hired as a supervisor, and now it's kind of like, oh, he was at Veta and ILM and whoever, and now he's like the big one. And then you make a, a good impression as a supervisor. You manage your people well. All the <laughs> all the ten points, which were two two, were still missing. I, yeah, I think this is. This I don't know. For me, it's a bit of a, of a smoke screen. Thing like think, yes. I see. I mean, it, it's, this it's is a hypothetical situation. Yeah, I, I, I no, don't even. Course. I don't even. I don't. I don't even know a person which trying to 
extrapolate like, okay, let's say I'm back to modeling as a senior modeler, let's say, and I've got like a soup who only has the shiny CV yeah. but, and with but a good manager, but yeah, okay. not really like technical talent or skill. Mm. You would you ask your lead anyway? Like your lead would be the first person you, so you, there will be a lead in between. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. As I said before, I'm not sure I would be able to be on board with that <laughs> because <laughs> if you want me to embrace the cause, yeah. I need to, I don't know, I need to be impressed. I need to have faith and respect. And uh, if I think my soup is a, a noob, yeah, I, I don't think I will, I will uh, be on board with that. It was a game expression, by the way, the noob one. <laughs> you know, instantly know if someone is a gamer if he uses this kind of terminology. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 <laughs> GG, I, I man, confess. GG. <laughs> I confess. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, yeah, but I, I thought it was an interesting aspect because um, I wanted to, to question it a little bit because I absolutely believe that yep. too. Uh, for me, it's like that's why I would say um, skill is the first point. Of course, yep. you cannot be supervised with all, all, without missing the rest, but skill is the first point. It's like basically you build up to something and then since you have the skill now maybe you don't follow through all the years and become like the, the best but you you keep it a little bit going and then now is like okay now I, I'm I based and now I, I add leadership mm -hmm. management like the pyramid kind of yeah like. so yeah so the, but I feel that's that's why I was kind of I tried to, to throw in this thing and and, yeah. and think about no, like no, no, it's true but I think you still need to um, as much as you can work a little bit on your skills like when you've got a little bit of time you need to like test things explore new software new plugins new workflow like to keep okay. you know to keep you in the vibe of like what's going on in the industry and not becoming like disconnected and like you know still you know banging on about like nervous modeling you know which is not even a, a thing anymore for example and also i just wanted to go back very quickly on the femme yeah, because thing. I have the question for that. Okay. Because I think like nowadays there is uh, something which is um, different from where I started uh, my career, which is the social network networking. Because when I started in early 2000, there wasn't such thing as Facebook or LinkedIn or, you know, Twitter. And, you know, there was like pretty much nothing. And uh, mail, <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> and <laughs> Net Netscape and IRC P and pigeon mail, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's something I can see a lot uh, now. That I mean, it does sound like I'm uh, old dad, <laughs> but uh, I can see a lot of like self promotion and yeah. a lot of yeah. stretching. So I don't know. I'm still uh, keen to rely on like. Actual skill and I mean I'm myself You're from the old guard. <laughs> pretty, yeah, <laughs> no, I can say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, and yeah, I can see that happening a lot. Like people trying to like elevate themselves and stretching, uh, you know, few experience in the industry, stretching them as much as possible to appear big and trying to like you know climb the ladder. Yeah. But for me, I think. There's no point to be to be uh, too much in a hurry of being a soup. I think you need to build up your career like cleverly and you know accumulate experience and skill, and then then you'll be ready. Like for me, uh, being a CG soup when you are let's say 24, it's meaningless like to 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 get respect and and being like you know trustable. You need to have a bit of age, I think, and a bit of experience, which tells your team like, okay, these guys must know what he's doing because he obviously spent like 20 years in the industry. I think that some some people will, will disagree with the age thing. And I'm, I'm not sure if, I, if I'm on board with that um, because it's also become become sometimes the state of like, oh, you don't, you need like more experience, you need more age, you need more like time, which um, in, as you already mentioned, like a lot of things change. Like for example, now you can be on this, on a, on a level of uh, like junior without ever being in a company before, like, mm -hmm. or like, or like mid because, because like, 
of course they're, they're still missing like the workflow stuff and the reality stuff but you can through courses through the through the connection you have on the internet you can basically build like so much of, of skill level for example and if you like do some personal projects if you even have the experience of a project and i think that's why i'm a little bit like biased in that i understand the point i think um with with time and experience and age you become more relaxed and you become more this like a little bit hopefully more zen um and hopefully more um priority uh, mm -hmm. based because this is a big thing i think in, in my young age also so i think there's uh two things which are like complementary like there is like the raw skills like basically the knowledge you've got and the experience on a production how you, do you deal with such an issue how do you deal with you know uh like a very rough supervisor or how do you deal with like short time deadline or you know all that kind of when you accumulate this experience when you um combine it with the skill set i think that's a very strong base to make a good leader because you can share your experience and you can tell your team okay i think we should go this way this way and and this way because from my experience is going to be very likely happen like that yeah and uh i think yeah the experience and therefore age uh, help you stabilizing the role and being as you said like zen and calm i absolutely agree with that i'm i'm a little bit again biased in that because i don't want to believe it in a way but i also see it for for example i'm over educated that's uh, that's absolutely true i studied like uh media computer science, technical directing, which is like compared to like 10 years, 15 years ago, it was more like you maybe study something, maybe not, and then like just jump in. So I'm, basi I'm basically very late to the game, even if my study was very practical and I had uh, literally more complex project than- So than you're some sort of a Tony Stark person, right? Tony Stark, why? Like, you know, micro computer, engineering thing so you study that uh, me media computer science okay so uh, i learned there's like scripting and you we go into apps and web and stuff like that yeah, i thought you just thought you mean like robotic no and, no, 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 you know, no 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 okay. no media is still more like the visual that's the right visual side but okay. there's like robotic uh, classes um no and um but but then i noticed like i kind of sometimes miss the the calmness the, the, the from experience i kind of like over overachiever and o like sometimes overachiever and don't have enough patience or something like that you know it's 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 weird i'm kind of expecting more from myself and others and mm -hmm. the whole situation and i feel sometimes it's because i'm in this self promoting state uh of uh like everyone self promoting so i see that it's like yeah. like commercials everyone's like oh i was in this company and like you, you see basically every showreel is now the same uh, it shows also the same projects don't say that <laughs> <laughs> no it's kind of like you you see like you open a showreel and they're all high bu high budget project doesn't matter like who he is they're like new in the industry old industry it's like the same reel it doesn't matter like, like Okay, I cannot. I sometimes cannot just see the difference between like a junior at frame store mm. and supervisor for fifty years somewhere. It's like, yeah, he also did all the projects, kind of. Yeah, completely different position, completely different. Like maybe even a fragment of a. Of a that's an interesting um, thing because for me, a showreel should always come with a breakdown, which is basically a uh. PDF document, like stating what you did, on like let's say. In your show wheel, you're presenting an edit of like multiple shots. Yeah. So this is what I'm doing. Like then I'm doing a PDF uh, document uh, with um, a still frame of that shot, and I'm describing what I did specifically on that shot. Like you know the assets I, I worked on, or uh, the environment, and what I did, and roughly, uh, very briefly, the, the the technique I used. I mean, without going into like super specific, but. Yeah. I'm summarizing everything uh, because, yeah, I agree. I saw that <laughs> quite sometimes I like a reel with like super impressive uh, shots. And when you are scratching the surface, like you discover the guy just did a, a mask on that aspect. Wobbling grass in the background. 
And, and I mean, yeah, and I think it comes from the self-promoting phase. It's like it's like you see on LinkedIn. This is like what I absolutely. I mean, I'm I became a LinkedIn like a really crazy user. Uh, for me, it's like one of the most important platform now. Uh, even I wouldn't say it's it's this, it's more like a spark than really like a job platform. For example, it's more like Facebook meets a little bit of chances you get a job maybe through that. Mm -hmm. But no, I wouldn't say it's like the job creator, at least not from my experience. The help connecting. Yeah, but for example, on, on LinkedIn, everyone is a CEO uh, of something and everyone uh, everyone shows like his reel and they're all kind of impressive. Um, and but, but and then it creates this this uh, situation where you feel you have to to match that because like if, you, if you're honest and show what you really did and show uh, what you really can show, it's basically like compared to that, it's like bullshit. It looks, it looks like even even your eyes like will say like, oh, I cannot, I cannot publish this. You know, like it, you feel embarrassed a little bit yeah. from your from stuff. So you, then you throw in like a Aladdin or whatever you did like in the company, even if you didn't like really do anything. And I'm I'm guilty as charged for that too. I kind of like I have a project where um, like Breaking Point, and I did the pipeline. But what can I show there? Like yeah, it's, I, it's, I literally have problems sometimes. It's to very show difficult something. when you are dev. Yeah, exactly. Having a real, yeah, and then, and then, but I cannot not show it because a it's one of the project that is like has the highest spread from my reels. Uh, I won the VS award, mm -hmm. and so for me, it's like I have to bring it in. Yeah. But but uh, that's the the conflict I have very fast. Yeah, that's and, difficult. And I measure myself in the end through the people uh, who I compete with. Yeah. And this is like, for example, all the show reels I see everywhere. So this creates a, a, a complicated situation. What well, would be interesting, and we already drifting off completely from this list, but I like that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we talked about fame. Like, did you feel like that that it made a difference for you? Like, what difference made it made it through the years that you became like high position? Did you fel felt that you like your fame? Uh, foreshadows you? Like, if you came to a company, for example, and you slowly like through the years mm. become more uh, like higher positions, I, 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 would, I wouldn't say the fame, like, because fame or no, no, because I mean, I was um, in those big studios. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, everyone's famous there. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. Because there, I mean, when you're joining, uh, let's say ILM, like you, you're surrounding, uh, surrounded with like people which I are here for like longer than you. Yeah. So, yeah, as you said, like we are all famous. So, basically, if everyone is famous, like no one is famous. Yeah. True. So, okay, okay. Um, yeah. So maybe you you will have that in in the in the future someday when you when you maybe go to a smaller company or something yeah. like that. They will. Yeah. That, I, I'm yeah. curious about like how much like how because I, I have this feel like I I kind of lost this feeling through the years, but I I see a lot of people still have this feeling. Oh yeah, like especially like oh he was at, at Pixar or like uh, he worked on this project, and then people instantly like 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 weirdly, put you on a pedestal. I had a. Uh, Kind of a similar-ish situation um, uh, because when I went uh, to the UK uh, the first time, because basically I went like twice. The first time was like uh, 14 months in a row, and then I went back uh, to France for nine months, and then went back to the UK and then stayed there for seven years or something. Yeah. So during those nine months, I went back to uh, France, Paris, and I went back. To, um, to work in the French uh, studios. So obviously smaller studios, like commercial, smaller projects, smaller teams. And because I was like, at the time coming from MPC, I was expecting like, let's say some sort of a- Open aura, doors. Or, or, or not, not open doors, but like a, an aura. Okay, kind of okay. like, like, oh, the guy like must know what he's talking about. Yeah. And it was pretty much exactly the opposite. Really? Yeah. So I was like, okay, discussing, we should maybe do things like that and do things like that. And it was like, ah, no, no, we are not doing a uh, Lord of the Ring here. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you, 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 it was pretty much like, you know, like, like a, a, sla a slap in the face. Like, really? you no, know, you're too used to your fancy tool oh, in, your, in, in your big studios. No, 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 here we are like doing real stuff. So it was pretty much the other way around. I feel, I feel it's a French thing. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> no, because in Germany, I know that it's completely the opposite. Yeah. Like, I mean, it can happen everywhere that people like flip it and are unsecure and then will like 
no, we don't do this fancy pansy here. But and I, I know in Germany, definitely the, the mentality is like you have a higher state position, you're an international person, they 100% will respect you more. Yeah, generally, no. in general, let's say. I mean, that was. Super, <laughs> I mean, it, it, at the time for me, it was super frustrating. Like, wow. Um, yeah, people were like almost, um, you know, like I uh, know. I mean, you're too used to your big studio thing. Like, wow. Okay, that, that, that's that's. I didn't expect that. And, and <laughs> I mean, that was part of why I, when I had the opportunity, I just went back to the UK again because I, mean, I said like can't work with those idiots anymore yes yeah, it's, it's it's so crazy how different mentalities in, in different no, countries true. are and um like even something positive it, it feels like you're like uh, uh what was it like when you get uh de declined for a job because you're over qualified <laughs> it's something like that a yeah little bit. <laughs> yeah there was a, a bit of that vibe and um and on top of that I, I was trying to be helpful like to bring okay like this is the way they are doing things over there so maybe we should like explore those options like yeah. you know i wasn't trying to be arrogant maybe i was i don't know but i was trying to just be helpful yeah and i've been like completely dismissed so yeah, it was super frustrating that period that's crazy it's fear I, again for me the same experience uh, it's yeah it's kind of the fear of the unknown the fear of someone who takes over and all the all this crazy stuff yeah i didn't i didn't expect that that's uh quite a surprise i would say that, yeah, that I mean, fame can can have this like we call it fame uh, maybe it's it's more like resume portfolio experience yeah, the shiny cv yeah. yeah so for me it was always uh, very simple it's like someone comes there yes if it if they put it as a shield for everything you know yeah um, because like i had a situation where, where people literally told me like because we did it in this company and i was like this is not the reason like literally this like if you have a point and then give it, and we did it in this company. That makes sense because then you're like, oh, from experience, that makes more your point made better. But if it's like the only point is like, we do it this, and then you're like, but this doesn't fit maybe this project or this team or the software or uh, the current state of my of, of, of the of the technology. And then like, yeah, but we did that in in ILM, in method, in whatever. And it's like, wow, okay, this is like, then I absolutely understand. I will also, I had a situation where I'm like, Dude, bring is that there's not an argument for me. Maybe it's an argument for some people, but not for me, definitely. So yeah, I mean that's, I mean, today I'm pretty often referring to like yeah, Frimstar was doing it this, this way or <laughs> ILM is doing it this way. But I'm again, I'm trying to like bring solution because I mean the big boys thought about that issue like before. Yeah. Us, so let's explore uh, solution they used. You know. And this is why experience are there. Yeah, like um, you, 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 you grow. That's one of one of the things. Like um, I experienced now a lot of pipelines, so I can adapt to the current situation. Mm -hmm. I think this is the important part that you did take the, the experience that yeah. makes sense, and then say, okay, uh, we used uh, PTEX, for example. Um, maybe it makes sense here because this and this and this aligns perfectly mm -hmm. for that. Uh, not because we use that at Pixar no. or something, yeah. but because maybe it makes it fits. sense. Exactly, the, the need, but but normally you maybe you maybe have no experience with PTEX, and then maybe it's like like uh, maybe it doesn't like it's harder to suggest it yeah. if you don't have experience with this kind of workflow, and I or think you're just relying on what you read read on the internet. It's the worst. Yeah. Uh, absolutely hate that if people just like never there, test. There, there is quite a few people like that, like who read something on the internet and then claiming, like we should do this this way because uh, Weta is doing it this way, and they never went anywhere. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of like deciding like for Render Man instead of Arnold because because Render Man is the Pixar renderer and then finding out that this is definitely more my maintenance mm. renderer, exactly. which is uh, which is absolutely more capable than Arnold, but it, also you need more capable people to yeah. to maintain it. If you don't have like forty, um, exactly, dev, there is no so, way you can integrate that. Super weird. Um, let's let's continue. <laughs> let's try to make to finish this list. No, but I I love this uh, this side tracking because that's why we're here to to find uh, <laughs> and to digress a little bit <laughs> to, to digress. That's that's the only reason we're here to digress. Um, point nine because uh, also who's listening? Maybe he's like waiting. Like I, I want to listen. Yeah. I, I want the point can you, nine. Can you stop stop your trivia and and give me? I know want to be a better leader, and I don't know the last two points. <laughs> So nine collaboration across the company, basically one of the things you mentioned very in the beginning, even 
Um, and <laughs> I like the point here. Some managers create si silos, silos running their teams with an us versus them mentality, competing against other teams within the company, which reminds me instantly on Steve Jobs. Oh yeah, um, it's that's what he did uh, when he did like his Mac. Um, he created like I, I was I, I'm not sure about uh, a specific products. I think it was like one app, app, uh, Macintosh and the other team, and he he kind of played him. You know this this story? No, absolutely. Uh, so basically, they, they were kind of developing um, I think the Macintosh or something mm -hmm. like that, and another product which was like competing. And he literally said like he divided these two teams and and played them against each other. So like oh they're developing that and we need like to be faster and stronger and and so he could make like them like op op opponents mm -hmm. in a way that uh, that they like developing maybe like uh, a computer but in different direction and like his idea seems to be like he pushed they pushed him himself because they had an enemy mm -hmm. and they needed the new who against who they competed and there can only be one winner so they kind of like be become this rivalry and it worked uh, I'm not sure if if it's 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 a good leadership method. It's definitely a destructive one. It's a bit brutal, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because you destroy people. But in this case, it, they created uh, this product and it worked. And it was also creatively not, not like not not bankrupt, yeah. which you can maybe expect yeah. if they have yeah. this kind of stuff. But because like creating enemies is always like a good thing. I mean, you can see it in in, in the ending of Watchmen, for example, mm -hmm. creating an enemy suddenly the whole world is united. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's a leadership style. Um, so, but again, like Google says the opposite, and of course, we I kind of agree. Agree, I of agree with that because, yeah, I think we we talked about that a little bit earlier. Like, I think one of the one part of the role is like to make people talking to each other. Like, yeah. I mean, basically, we are like problem solver. We are, you know, solving a problem and facing another one, solving it, and and so on and so on. So, most of the time, to solve an issue you have to put people in the room and make them talk to each other. And, you know, you need to uh, be the maestro of that communication and organize that. Da -da -da. <laughs> and organize that, um, you know, communication between departments. Yeah. And uh, and then sometimes, okay, take a decision. Okay, you've got that point of view. You've got that point of view. Let's do it this way. But, uh, yeah, you need to connect the dots. That's very very important but uh, one thing i always see i think i in most companies i was so far in is a rivalry between uh departments yeah and rivalry and this is like like this is like even i never saw something else rivalry between companies working on the same project oh yeah literally mm. never saw anyone any collaboration with studios where there was not like oh fuck them like, uh, like literally, like where, where, where the people in in one company said like they're the most incompetent people on the other side, ever, and and probably the opposite. Probably I mean, around, I mean, you I, mean know? I, I saw some example like not to that extent, but yeah, like two companies working on the same project and they have to share assets. So one is requesting like. Assets from the other one, like so we want the model, we want the maps, we want the groom curve, and can we have the muscle yeah. system as well? And yeah, the other one, like not super keen to share everything. So, you know, it's like, ah, oh, we can't really export the muscle system, sorry. Ah, okay. And we all knew it was bullshit. But uh, yeah, I saw a bit of that. But in a way, I kind of get it because mm -hmm. let's say you are uh, the company who put in place that muscle system, that's really um, what you're bringing to the table, that's your knowledge, that's your uh, development. So why would you share that with a, an opponent? Yeah. So you can, in a way. You cannot convince me with that. I'm an open source guy, so. Yeah, but uh, as, you, as, you as lost a, me already with, I understand why people not sharing. Not everything. Even like if like, <laughs> It's more like like uh, the U.S. government, like we cannot share this information with the public. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe that. I absolutely, uh, since uh, I, f I, f I thought about that too, and I, I saw this conflict a lot of mm -hmm. times, like specific plugins, which only are in a specific company and the other one needs them, else they cannot even like open the file maybe. Um, in a way, I 
I don't, I don't really understand it because it, it 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 first creates like an absolutely horrible production because in the end like things are not like not the this like there are already so many complications and then um, you cannot give it them the correct data basically a lot of times because things are not not there um, and on the opposite side I don't think you you win you win this game by uh, by uh, like hiding technology in general I, I never never think you in, you win in, that in that case it, it wasn't really hiding technology it was like not showing all the work like you know like crafting or even that like, I don't even that I, be, I don't believe because I, I think it's kind of we are in the same boat situation and that's for example the VFX problem generally this when you are, you are like two big studios like yeah. really why would you give 100% of your work on that asset and like if you see okay the next movie that company will bid will underbid yeah. that asset because we gave them pretty much everything which took us like three or four years to to achieve and then this one because we give them everything they will underbid the next project and will and they will got the 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 show i think it's goodwill from a company point of, i mean for me i see it differently let's say you are a developer and you're you know making a plugin and yeah i kind of like the open source aspect but that's different i think like from big studios like we're talking like million in industry mm. uh, profit so but i think, I I think that's the thing that's the thing which which basically um if you if you share it they don't have to invest more money so and it creates a goodwill so it will 100 percent because they all work on the same project anyway kind of you know like the biggest companies work always on the biggest uh, projects in uh, shared situations it's rarely that just one um, Le less and less like but then like avengers is like how many how many was there i don't i don't i don't know but avengers there was i don't know like w weta ilm framestore um method probably NPC probably NPC no NPC is not doing it is not the third floor is that for the previous yeah i mean first of the third floor is doing 90 percent of, <laughs> of, 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 of the movie yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah MP NPC is not doing any marvel since oh, okay, uh, didn't know. guardian of the galaxy the or first one rise yeah, rise fix? yeah uh, no rising, uh, rising sun picture maybe a little bit okay luma maybe trickster maybe trickster uh, so yeah lot, yeah yeah so of, basically lot, everyone uh, kind of pretty like, much so that's what i mean and in the end they can they if they would support each other it's kind of creates they will they will meet each other again like like people in real life and if they kind of push to each other like okay we know we invested in that we give it to you and it will happen the opposite way around 100 percent so that's that's what I where I'm going, but I understand that that this mist, there's a mistrust or at least a cautious. Like I, I can I can go a bit more specific in that example. Okay. I'm not uh, sure uh, if I should do, but <laughs> like the asset I'm talking about, it was the Hulk. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was at Framestore at the time, and we had to do a sequence with the Hulk. And of course, uh, this character has been defined and made before in previous movies. So um, ILM, who made the assets. Um, deliver us um, the model, you know, in typos, um, uh, the textures, um, I think the groom curves as well, but we didn't get any face shape and we didn't get any muscle system. So I remember a um, call with them and our um, head of rigging uh, asking like, so could you export us at least the 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 object the mesh of your uh, muscle system and they said oh, sorry we can't um, export as a mesh because that's a proprietary uh, system yeah, okay. and we all knew this was bullshit so basically we had to redo a muscle system and uh, facial expression but we already had the model and the texture and the groom curve so you know the they, they just they, they gave us like 80 percent not 100 so but i don't see the point like you you you, you say you try to explain why but i don't hear why no, i just I'm, hear I, the reality I, i'm not explaining about that that's the fact and like uh when you are making a, char a character such a, as the hulk obviously the muscle system and the animation and the facial expression it's that's the most important part right, basically probably the the trickiest part yeah. so why would you share that with your opponents? Because if you're giving everything, like, okay, here's the whole package, 
like you just now need to put some keyframe and animate the thing like like next time for let's say avenger 6 or whatever well you will underbid the, the hulk because you've got everything already and um and uh, yeah all the effort like we put and basically the money we put at some point we want some you know cash back so yeah it's, it's, it's i kind, kind of, of get it i mean to that level we are talking like millions so from a strategical point of view yeah I, I can't blame them at my point i mean blame like it's it's their decision so that's first thing you know like everyone can decide whatever he wants if he doesn't want to cooperate mm. cooperate at all it's it's their, absolutely their decision what that means is something else um it, it's kind of, we're getting a little bit political here <laughs> <laughs> but but i i think still i i, I always always uh, break it down companies i always break down companies also to humans it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. it's basically a company is a human because it acts as one being in the end you know, and if you if you compare that and and imagine you will have the same rivalry with your colleague, it would be destroy destructive. And basically, what you see in law or uh, a lot of like elbow mentality, where people hide stuff from I each other to, I that's different. to get yeah, but it's it's inside the same company. I mean, we are supposed to what, what, go in the same direction and fight together. You know, but you can say say like if you just open it a little bit up, it's like. Uh, uh, thinking in in countries and thinking in Europe, it's the same thing. You can think as ILM and Framestore, but you can f think as as the VFX industry, which if uh, they underbid each other to a point where they mm -hmm. all break down, which kind of a little bit happens sometimes. Um, which that that's what I mean. It's it's uh, you have to put yourself into healthy positions each other. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean you shouldn't like compete in a way because competition, uh, which like. Steve Jobs showed um, is a healthy thing because you feel like like you, you you want to be better than someone, so you try to up your skills. But it shouldn't get to the point where you sabot sabotage now, but where you don't help the other one. Because again, if you if you help them, you will grow because the industry will go grow. You will feel more competitive against them. I, th I think I think that's my my point basically. I think um, you need to help a little bit, but not fully. And then you need to educate and teach. And like in that very specific example, it's like, okay, we're not going to just idiotically share everything and just use it, but we can uh, help you le uh, learning how to build a, a muscle system or we can, you know, share, keep on and then make your own. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not just in, in the VFX. Animation has the same issues. It's It's like... A lot of industries have this problem of, but in the same company, like between colleagues, yeah, that's absolutely a, a very dickish mentality. Like, I mean, personally, I mean, I've always shared yeah. like stuff I found sometime just an hour ago. Like, oh, look, I found this. It looks like awesome, uh, and these funny, techniques. Funny gifts. <laughs> no, sometimes like you know, workflows yeah, and yeah, <laughs> not only funny gifts. Um, yeah, I'm not greedy okay. on that aspect at all. But again, I, I think it's just like a, a, a question of like because you can have companies where this is normal, where you feel, for example, and, and it's because you feel afraid of something. For example, you feel afraid of someone overtaking you. Uh, and and this means like the company does a bad job of giving you security that uh, sharing is good for you and for you for person and yep. for the company. And I think this is like uh, that's that's what I basically meant is it, there's a feeling in the industry that sharing is bad because you will not have the edge. You will uh, uh, don't bid next time as good as someone else because now they have the technology, they have the assets, and that's where I'm a little bit afraid for. And uh, that's where I feel the spiral of a little bit of mm. self-sabotaging by not supporting each other. No, no I, th I think sharing is very important, but not necessarily sharing the very latest thing, Like, but you can share the stuff from last year. Final, the first final, not the final, final, final. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know what, let, let, let's share our like, R&D from last year because we are already like ahead. Ten years ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's why. Well, that's how we go on, on a tangent here uh, with with collaboration across the <laughs> company. Uh, last point, uh, 10, very, very simple, uh, is a strong decision maker. 
Ja, ja. I mean, <laughs> yeah, sorry. We both, we yeah. both like kind of, kind of like, oh, wow. <laughs> sorry, 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 I was just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reconnecting. Yeah, I mean, that's something you do every day constantly. Like, okay, so you've got two solutions to solve that issue, this and this. Okay, I pick this because from my experience, that will... That, that's, that, that is the best solution. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, in a way, this decision making your is your job doing it yeah. all the time, every hour, pretty much. But it's also in a way that that other like give you options. I, I think this is also the best way that um, if um, if you have a good team, the team will provide you with options. Absolutely. Um, and and not like like oh we 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 go we only know this way we only go this way. Can you approve that? It's like. Uh, then you you maybe have some experience to show them another but in general i think a good team is like okay we thought about um using uh p or yeah. um and that's also a usd bit, uh, or something and then they, they say these are the options usd assembly reference what do you think mm -hmm. and then you can say and when, when you when you when you've got uh when you you build like um, a really good vibe with your team yeah. also sometimes let's say you're reviewing something and you you you're seeing, let's say, an asset, and you're like, ah, this is not all holding up, let's do another pass. And I don't know why I'm saying random things, like the, the, the texture is not holding up, let's do that in modeling, so at least it will uh, be sharper. And you can have someone on, on your team saying, saying like, hold on, I've got another idea, I can propose this, this, and this. So as a leader, you should like sometimes revise uh -huh. your judgment, it's like, okay, show me something, and then you have one day to have 24 hours <laughs> and i kind of like i kind of like that to be fair like uh being challenged by the team because sometimes you've got your vision like this is how i will solve that problem but sometimes you've got good surprise um someone from your team saying like okay we should do that in fx or with um i don't know like a, a mash approach or a more like mm. procedural approach and um if I'm not really sure, so, mm, okay, I'm not really sure what you what you mean. Show me something, and then we 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 decide. And then I'd rather like push the decision of 24 hours yeah. and just review the prototype. And sometimes you've got like good surprises. So uh, yeah, I like that. I think it's getting a little bit forgotten. Also, like when I when I think back to, to uh, provide options, I think it's a lot of times kind of like uh, supervisor. We have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, uh, like you maybe not familiar with every aspect, especially on on a specific department. And then, like, you kind of mm -hmm. have to improvise something. I think sometimes it should be more, more the way of like, okay, we have this issue. We thought about that. We have like one option, two options, three options, five options. Uh, let's let's have a quick talk and like from your like high perspective of the whole project, maybe or the company. Uh, what you think would make sense or from your experience, whatever, you know, and I think this is a thing which is a little bit neglected uh, in a lot of companies. I was like this um, coming with options instead of like like one or problems itself, you know, because then because you, you deprive as like a lead of of deciding because there's no decision if you have one option. Mm, yeah, of course. So, like you can you can basically just veto uh, it and say like yeah. no, this is a bad idea. But then it's like like someone provides you an option, provides you a way. It's like what do you want to say? It's like uh, okay, sounds fine. Oh, yeah, like said, sounds yeah. fine. You know. So there's not much of of the, yeah, of the experience of having someone uh, who like can decide the value of stuff through experience through um, having a broader perspective. Like yeah, I think. but that's yeah. Really, some a part of the job I, I like is like keep learning stuff, and um, yeah, when you're facing issue and you're coming with the solution, you think uh, which are the best, and like being challenged by other solution, and then learning from that. Uh, I really like that. What would be interesting for me is um, what what do you say are your biggest strength and weakness as a leader, like through if you would say like mm -hmm. this is where you you feel like you stepped up very well and feel this is where you feel very comfortable with this like skill or way of doing things and things where you say like okay this is thing uh, you still sometimes like hmm. from a leading standpoint yeah it's like yeah from uh, a leading standpoint 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're not talking technical aspects. Not modeling or yeah, something like hard surface. Yeah, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I think um, one of my um, best skill, I'd, I'd say, is um, try to keep the good vibe and it's a bit lame, but let's say happiness. Like, you know, when... Without the H. <laughs> <laughs> the happiness. Um, yeah, when I'm going to like see someone and like, oh, look, we've got that crisis situation, like how we can solve this. Like, yeah. I'm not going to be the one like yelling like, ah, this is like mental. Or we, need, we need you to stay late. Like I'm, I, I'm trying to like keep a positive vibe and like, okay, so we've got like a, that shitty situation. We all know that. What can we do to solve this? Like, how can I help you? And I'm trying to like keep up the good vibe and being funny in, in a way, but also like on it. Uh, so, and I'm trying to like keep that vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, in my opinion, what I'm, I'm not too bad at, at it. And um, yeah, I think my weakest uh, aspect would be, I think we mentioned that earlier, like when I'm not on board with something, a decision, oh, yeah. I, I can be, I can become like, yeah, kind of negative and uh, reluctant. If you cannot like kind of follow the, the idea, yes. if someone doesn't explain it good enough or it, yeah. it is not good enough and they were not enough exploration of options. Yes. Yeah. It's... Yeah. I would say I can't blindly follow uh, a lead. So I would say that's my weakness. Oh yeah, we had this discussion about yeah. um, like being a good soldier or being no matter what. Uh, exactly, yeah. yeah, being a good soldier no matter what, and it creates this person who is like accept everything and is uh, like is good to work with. Mm -hmm. But we were, like we were kind of like both saying like it's hard to imagine this person as a leader because um, he doesn't like see differences. He doesn't see like differences in in leadership style above in decisions. He just says, okay, that's seems to be the, the thing. So I will lead also later if he becomes yeah. in that situation. But uh, yeah, I don't think I'm a, I'm a yes person. Like, you know, that guy saying yes, no matter what, and following. In a way, I think this is part of, of, of becoming a leader because uh, if you say yes to everything, I don't, I really don't think you can become a leader. Like at least yeah. not a, a competent one. I think so. Um, but you have the struggle of as 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 as, as, a, as an artist or a soldier or whatever you want to say, um, you sometimes have problems to step up because you kind of it depends on your environment. If yeah, you're in a, yeah. in a bad environment and don't trust uh, the lead leadership yeah. or decisions, you never step up because you're always kind yeah. of in the, in the loop of not not uh, conforming enough to be promoted. Yeah, and, and and usually when I'm not in a good environment or what I'm judging not being a good environment, like, you know, with people I'm not really the big fan of, yeah. I'm usually like looking for another place. <laughs> yeah, that's also like, uh, from, from my, uh, from my um, opinion, I would say, uh, I agree with your first statement, definitely. That's our thing, I, I said it in the beginning also, one of the things I liked is like, like, hey man, what's up? And uh, funny thing, you, you also, you also kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's weird, but you, 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 you make it even happen in your chat. Oh yeah, yeah. So the vibe is the same in your like, chat. Like you mean, you mean no, no, like you know, internal chat, like yeah, yeah. If you like, if you if you write like in Teams or mm. something like that, you ha you have the same feel. Like, hey man, what's up? Or like, <laughs> can you have a look at this? And and just like, oh, okay. It's basic. After a while, you can you can hear the voice a little bit, you know. <laughs> and uh, I, I would absolutely agree. I I think this is all, uh, definitely one. I mean, of I, the I'm trying I my my best to keep that vibe going. But yeah, in the end, also it's it's important. Uh, if you get to a management position, uh, to reflect yourself, to mm. be able to say, this is my strength and this is my weakness. Because if you cannot say it without being read, getting read or whatever, like people judge you, people, yeah. uh, people see you in a specific light and will say, oh, this is good and this is bad. And, and if you don't know that, how can you like improve or how can you, uh, balance it out? If you, if you notice, for example, you sometimes too micromanage, you know that because you cannot let go. Um, you at least know it and can like try to balance it out and like say like guys, <laughs> I did a tangent last week. Now we take it over again <laughs> and stuff like that. And, and and also what I would like to add is like by being positive, I not I, I don't mean being like having that stupid 
be positive no matter what. Like every, it's awesome. everything is awesome. Like, but I mean, it, it, it happened like sometime. Like I, I can say to the team, like, look, this is like super shitty situation. Like nothing is working, but we need to do that. Let's see how we can achieve uh, that. I can help with this. I can help with that. But I think being honest with the situation also yeah. help people follow you because you're not bullshitting them like, no, 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 this is working. Everything is awesome. Like, you know. I, I literally had to, I had to learn this because uh, from 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 a German aspect, you're you're always more of the how can we make it better. Mm -hmm. So you're not very uh, fast on the compliment side or the this looks great side. The first thought you generally has and it's like a little bit culturally is kind of like, okay, what can we do better? It doesn't mean it has to be like personal attack or something like like but where you're like this is shit. It's more like it's being kind of picky. Like, it's kind of yeah, it's like like net picking very fast or like where you don't appreciate it. Like literally you personally don't appreciate it. Like you see someone's work and you, 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 you say, Oh, this is great. Like in like for a millisecond and then you instantly in mm -hmm. the judgment mode and then like, okay, now the background is a little bit too blue. Da, 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 da. And sometimes you forget like firstly for yourself enjoying it, but also the person who is showing it, uh, even if he wants feedback, even if that's the reason of the whole thing, it kind of, it doesn't feel natural in a way because like uh, you're always kind of in a judge mode mm -hmm. and this is not uh, this is not creates like a very weird solely and, and physically situation because because you're always kind of negative in a way like you're always kind of like mm, 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 and not like wow oh, this is awesome and i don't mean like you're like oh everything's awesome like you're basically sad but in a way that like um i, I like that because generally especially in our level this is what things happen you know even if you ha your judgment is high level general things are, which are provided to you are on a high level and are looking good. So I think you have to be open to this first impression of like, oh, this is cool. It just but doesn't mean me hit the mark, think that's but... probably like, you know, like the very basic like management tip, you know, that shit sand, what we call the shit sandwich. <laughs> it's like a bad, a bad, bad, good, bad, or good, bad, bad. Good, no, good, bad, good. Okay. It's like, I would say, this is... <laughs> Awesome. Hmm. Can we change this, 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 and that? Yeah. But thank you for uh, your effort. Like it looks absolutely great. Okay. Uh, that's yeah. yeah. A very. Uh, I, I was thinking why the bread is the good part. <laughs> <laughs> it's, basically, it's, basically, it's basically you're sandwiching notes or something to change between yeah. two compliments. I think it's 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 a, cr a crutch, but I, I don't believe in like uh, yeah. I think it's 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 okay if you use that in the beginning, but I don't think it's 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 a good thing <laughs> because it's it can it comes very very fake very fast. They, literally, like like people telling me, uh, don't take it personally, but oh, yeah. um, uh, this is like you know, and and then you 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 instantly like after a while like you 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 don't like you don't want to hear that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, no, of course. So and and. No, no, sometimes you have to be honest. When it looks shit, you have to say, to, man, it just look, it looks awful. It's horrible. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> take that away from me. <laughs> Shut it off. And then you burn, burn the monitor or something like that. It's like, no. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, le le let's, let's see that as a, in a regular review context, yeah. like you're seeing a shot, let's say out of lighting. It overall looks really cool, but you can like, pinpoint like i think this is look a bit like fake and that texture not holding up but yes. overall i kind of like you know when i squint like kind of like the the vibe of it but let's sure but i think uh, i think again it's a, it's, a, it's a good crash and i'm i'm rather have someone using it than not using it at all um but i think the best uh, situation is if you already have a good vibe mm -hmm. Uh, you can, you can. I think you can literally come to me and say, Alex, I saw that your 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 script was shit, or Alex, I saw your lighting was shit, because I know, like, first thing, you have a specific vibe in this moment, and I know how you mean it if you communicate with me. You know, yeah, but so I, you I, don't I, have to do to shoot a code it. Especially, I, 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 I know I, it most of the time. I wouldn't say it like that because, yeah, as a soup, you can't say that it looks like shit. Uh, but I would try. Let, let's say it, it's really bad. I would like uh, maybe like. I wasn't very clear for the brief. You put out the dictionary. <laughs> Synonyms. <laughs> <laughs> so, my man. No, I, it I looks handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> it looks disabled. Um, 
No, I'll try something like, um, like, what did you try to achieve? Because, or can you like present your work? Because I'm not sure I'm reading this correctly. Or, I, you know, I'll try a different approach. But no, okay, I mean, okay. maybe with like French people, I like, can go directly like, man, it looks like crap. But German too. Yeah. Yeah, of course. We are used to that. It's like that's okay. why we need, we need more happiness in our in a, in a, in, a, in a German meeting. Uh, <laughs> again, it's a, it's a little bit overemphasized, of course. But um, cultural differences are re really different. Like cultural success comes also from the cultural differences, you know. So, um, but yeah, uh, that's one of the things I learned from the American way is having this overemphasized. So I try to bring it in in my in my feedback. But sometimes it's way too much, like it's the, too the, much. Am the American way. Of course, it's too much. It's but, like... but I learned that from frame stores. Kind of like it helped me a lot um, mm. to give that like a positive vibe. Um, to be all, also a little bit more over sometimes, not without like not being fake, but like over. Like like this looks awesome. Instead of like looks good. Now this 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 this. You know. Yes, yeah, I think for me the the British way is right in the middle because it's not. Completely like, oh, it's absolutely awesome, man. This is fantastic, you know, for like 10 minutes. And then after that, you finally getting the notes. I think the, the British way is a bit more European. Yeah. There is a bit of that, that, you know, there is no like negativity, like straight into your face. Yeah, It's like, yeah, it looks good, like as a first step, you know. Um, and But you then you can have like an honest discussion with basically, basically without the bullshit. The British way, I mean, at least my experience yeah. of the British way in VFX. <laughs> <laughs> now we get really correct here. That's a London, super specific way. Yeah, London. Um, yeah, it was a good, um, I would say, in between, between yeah. the French way, which is like super yeah. raw and, br and brutal, and the over-the-top American way. I mean, of course, I'm making kind of a caricature of the two, but just to give you the idea, I think for me, the, the British was kind of in between, like overall positive, but also no Focus. bullshit and straight to the point. Yeah, yeah so, I would agree. Uh, I had the same feeling in, uh, when I was in Framestore. It was kind of this American way, which was for me a little bit weird in the beginning because it was too much awesomeness. Mm -hmm. um, but after a while, I, I noticed that they're still focused and can, um, especially inside the company itself, uh, can like criticize mm -hmm. and say, this is not, not what we want. And it, and it kind of was a very positive experience for me. Like I was literally saying, this is sounds like the perfect balance because I didn't like the way like generally uh, like German companies really give you feedback when I was working there. It was too harsh, too much on oh, the yeah. nose, too punchy. Um, <laughs> Whipping. Uh, or, or, or too much like structure. You can literally felt that they kind of copied some styles like the sandwich method or some shit like that. And and you can you can fail it. It was trained yeah. and was really badly trained. It's kind of like this, uh, like you, you sit down in a room and it's like, this looks awesome. No, no, not awesome, but uh, um, this looks good. This looks uh, very, very nice. Very nice work. La la la. And you can like, like, uh huh. And then like, okay, but the, 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 and the tone completely shifted, and you can felt it. Like, okay, this is the introduction was just someone told yeah. them, please tell, talk this way in the beginning. Just, you just got the uh, template. Exactly. You know, like, and, and I didn't like that, and I was kind of like. I don't like this fakeness. Uh, that's why I don't li like the, the the sandwich method as a method in itself. But yeah, the, but the general idea, of course. Yeah, yeah the general idea is not like being super harsh in the no. first place because, like, as a leader, ultimately what you want is um, the the artist uh, just to stay in our industry to basically address the notes and yeah. be happy. They should be motivated to fix yeah, it. Absolutely. That was like like like. So oh, I love it. Like thank you for this yeah. criticism. I so I I, it. I think if it, like that's the 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 point of the sandwich, right? If you start with a compliment, like yeah, cool, thank you for the for your for your service. Work. Like <laughs> no, I mean you know thank thank you for submitting this. It looks really good, <clears throat> really cool as a as a first pass. But now like how about addressing this this and this? What do you think? You can like also use that card, and uh, and then if you end up with like thanks again, I think like next version we should like super close uh, of having this approved, yeah. for example. I think you keep the person happy because it's if you have average the message is overall positive with like a few notes. So um, yeah, I think and keeping the. Uh, uh, people of your team motivated and happy to improve yeah. the work. I think that's very important.
Um, I have a, a little bit more personal question to that. Um, did, did you did you feel that that your 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 leadership style uh, changed through um, being like married and having a kid, like being becoming a father? Did you feel that that there's, mm. there was a difference in? <laughs> Or uh, I don't know if, if you can even ask this kind of, this question or with with no. uh, with a uh, with a resulting answer, but no, not 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 really. Um, I think yeah, it's too different world. I think uh, you, you don't treat anyone like like. <laughs> and also, and and, and 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 I think also like my wife knows me too much and too perfectly, so she she reads me okay too much, so. I can't really use like strings I can pull in a, 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 at work. Yeah. So uh, I just also like a little bit like um, sometimes have the feeling that maybe if you're uh, becoming a family guy, like a uh, family guy, um, uh, you become a little bit more softer um, in your in your way, like not so pushing forward. No, I, I, I think the, the, um, the kids make you good at negotiating <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> that's See? that's that's um something i, I, I want to, to to bring yeah because basically with the kids you, you're always negotiating so and their logic sometimes i don't ally anyone's logic so you, you you have to bring to, to you have to adapt to their logic yeah because uh they sometimes don't have a real logic so yeah, they just yeah, do yeah. whatever but there is that um reward thing so um that's I mean, basically, uh, you're negotiating with some sort of a reward with the kids. So, yeah, maybe I became better at work by like negotiating <laughs> with departments or you know. Yeah, I just want to address one one last question because we we already had um, we talked about leadership and all the points in Google, um, but also that mentor is very important to become a good leader. Like vital even mm -hmm, i would say mm -hmm. um what would you say if someone wants to approach you as a as a mentor because you're now basically in the mentor stage where, where people <laughs> ask you for being a mentor um what would you suggest like how should they approach you like which which is the way where you feel like comfortable um that someone like ask you to be a mentor like because i i don't think someone's like hey want to be my mentor <laughs> want to spend like some hours of your week um me the guy you don't know uh to... i think to approach me uh i think i would say that in a very simple way like hey man this is where i'd love to go can you help me with this and like allow me some time with you uh and some advice and if i can i will i think uh as i said i love to share experience and tips I mean, technical or, or um, from a leading point of view. So, uh, yeah, if I've got the time, I will do it happily. That's too easy. I don't think that works on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what would you recommend from your experience, like how you did uh, approach your mentors to keep them, keep their ha like the happiness up? That they they want to support you because it's 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 a thing you don't you don't you cannot just like stick yeah, your yeah, fingers yeah. and mean, people want to support I mean, you. I mean, I mean, it, it wasn't that formal, like it wasn't that kind of uh, Jedi you're but no I want you know my <laughs> yeah like a Jedi but I want <laughs> relationship. <laughs> it wasn't like that obvious. It was um, a bit more like um, okay, you're above me because you're uh, you have a higher position or more experience or you're older. But um, let's, you know, do things together. I will ask you advice when I need to, but uh, let's not state that super vertical relationship. Yeah. So uh, in a way, it's not a proper mentoring. It's, um, it's I would say, an unsaid mentorship. Yeah. And uh, ultimately, it becomes more like a friendship like a friend relationship yeah. more than anything. I think it's also like already the tip because I noticed that this, like the, the official mentorship thing doesn't work. Uh, people kind of like despise that. It's kind of like, feels like, like you need, you're now in a, in a relationship where you have to provide yeah. and it's, it's stressful for yeah. people. And they're kind of like, no, like, what do I get from this? So I think this is like literally, literally one of the best, best tips I tried also. 
uh, with you, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I think that's the best way possible. It's like there is no like mentoring. It's just like uh, friendship, and we, yeah. sh we share like experience, joke, and and tips, and you know, yeah. and we progress like that, and we build up something, not a vertical like Jedi Padawan thing, which I, I don't know. I mean, me personally, I'm not really on board with that. I mean, I'm really, really comfortable with that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's... I think everyone, or a lot of people, because I tried everything. I tried to not tell someone he's my mentor and kind of like try to learn from him. Didn't work. Um, I tried literally very beginning said like, hey, I would like to have you as a mentor. Didn't work. And for example, with you, I, I basically took you to the side and asked, hey, um, I have this and this and this. Um, I, I like your style. I like how you work. I like the da, da, da. And I'm, I'm in the future, I would like to go this direction mm -hmm. too. Um, can I can I join you? I think it doesn't yeah. get out of the way. And and you were literally on board on with that. And I, yeah. I saw that. And you tried also to take some time off. And yeah, I, because for me, it's also bring me the opportunity to do like a ten minute break in the day. But no, yeah. like, because like the 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 day are, could be like quite hectic. So yeah. it's give me the opportunity to have like a coffee break and just like chit chat. Because I kind of see that more like a chit chat and it is a uh, next change more like a you know a raw uh course or lecture of something it's more like it has to be an exchange i think yeah. um because that's also some something which is important to me i don't see uh relationships as like unidirectional like just me delivering stuff i also want to receive yeah. like experience knowledge skills tips whatever like fun yeah, fun, exactly. So, uh, when it's too unidirectional, I just, I mean, I just don't like that. Yeah, I think uh, that that was also a point for me. Uh, like when we when we started to to, to be a little bit like this mentoring uh, situation, I I always thought about like keeping it light for you. So not like like oh I have this issue or I have this a question. So for me it was like kind of like try to keep it like friendshiply and mm -hmm. try yeah. to. to to, to joke, to, be, to ask what, how you are, because it's, else it becomes this stiff thing where someone is basically giving, and you it, it doesn't it's not relaxing for you to be and, in the situation. And, and, and also like, I mean, at least the way I view it, if it's like becoming super formal, it can also be like not embarrassing, but like, or oh, shit, I, I don't see myself yeah, yeah. into that position really. So I don't know, it makes me kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think establishing a more like on the same level. Uh, relationship and just like it's just one person giving tips to another and just like ex just an exchange basically yeah. i think it makes things like simpler and overall uh, more efficient i think yeah i would say this is basically the the main tip of uh, mentoring itself is keep it like if you find someone you you like respect you want to learn from you think this is the perfect fit for you because you think like that this could be me in like five years or um i think you, you should like approach it very lightly go to this person yeah. tell what's your goal yeah and keep it simple keep it simple keep it lighthearted. don't keep it like you're writing notes and yeah, yeah. Like, no, no, no. I have this 10 questions today. Yeah. How about then? Um, keep it also in a, in a loop. So for me, like one of the things I try to, to do with us is like at least once a week mm -hmm. that we have like not too much. I was like at the beginning, I was like asking, can I just join you uh, in the meetings? Just watching you and, and that you tell me like when you have a specific meeting where it fits. But then also like having like once a week, like maybe that we are one on one, mm -hmm. I can ask you something, maybe I have an issue, personal, yep. whatever. Um, and this worked very good. And for me, this was... And I think, yeah, as long as you keep it simple and uh, on a human level, not on a, you know, a very... Um, Hierarchy style. Yeah, 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 hierarchical thing. Yeah. Just, you know, simple. That's For me, that's the way. Yeah. And I would also like sum it up also the whole concept of leadership. Basically, the same way as we approach mentorship is keep it on the human level, stay professional, mm -hmm. of course. You yeah. cannot like just play around, be the nice guy or be the or the super professional guy. You still have to think about the, the person, the, the their goals. Um, you cannot just like say like, oh, yeah, he, he gets paid, so he has to deliver. No, you, no, the, no, I mean. The moment you destroy someone's like like motivation, uh, he he gets away from you. He gets away from your next maybe what you want. Um, and I think this is like I think you you, you summed up perfectly. It's kind of kind of um, lightheartedness is, is an important factor. 
Um, management is an important factor. You're not the, the one who touches everything anymore. Yeah. Um, you have to keep that in mind that you're now no, like You're not a superstar anymore. Yeah, yeah you, you evolved. You, you, you basically grow with your team. Mm -hmm. So if your team cannot grow like skill wise, personal wise, if someone is like an asshole and you just like whatever, uh, and you don't handle that, he can like poison yep. the whole situation. Absolutely. So I think it's there's like a lot of responsibilities comes to your way, but I think a lot of people who who are like like us who who respect people who does that good, we try to even it can be sometimes questionable why we do that because it's so much work and so much like also like um, like negative waves coming our way or problems come our way. We kind of enjoy it still because we want to be this person who we, for mm -hmm. example, admired and had like big respect of how he treated us, um, how he made our lives easier and just like inspired us. And sometimes this is like all the points we need to remember ourselves that um, our work is now not anymore that to provide, but like support people who provide in the end. And I think yep. this, this is what brings that home. Thank you to Nicolas Leblanc for sharing with us his art of leadership. Are there topics you would like to see discussed in more detail in the future? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe if you came this far and would like to see more videos in the future. Thank you for listening. See you in the next episode.